Welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're checking out a super popular Santa Cruz trail bike that is finally available in aluminum. A bike that's in its second generation and when it first came out all they made it in was the super bougie C and CC carbon fiber frames. But in this video we're checking out the Santa Cruz High Tower AL in the D spec. So this is the least expensive way to get into an aptly named and incredibly awesome trail bike. So we're going to go into the features and designs of the frame, go over the parts spec, and then finally we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So sit back and let's check out this bike together. Diving into the high tower name, this bike is now in its second generation, but when it first came out, it was really revolutionary in the 29er trail bike category. So for quite some time there had been 29er trail bikes but they never quite handled as well as the smaller wheel 26 or 27 and a half inch wheel bikes and when santa cruz came out with their first generation high tower they really changed that game the high tower was designed as a bike for you know taller riders being able to have a 29 inch wheel but then it quickly became loved as one of their most popular bikes that they sold and going into that, I personally owned two high towers in first gen, as well as one of their high tower LTs, which was a long travel version, now called the Mega Tower in V2. And it was a really incredible bike, and one I certainly remember as being an awesome way to get a good handling 29er for New England trails near me, as well as all across where you need a bike that's going to be able to climb, handle, as well as descent. And the only challenge with that first generation was because since Santa Ana Cruz was not expecting this to be a volume seller, they only sold that bike in carbon fiber. But for V2, that's all solved. So this is the new second generation of the high tower, now available with an aluminum frame. And that particular piece is really awesome to see and pretty exciting because it helped brought down some of the price points to allow more riders to be able to enjoy it. They also made some revisions to the bike, such as changing the shock location, but still running their VPP suspension design. It's got 150 millimeters of front travel and 145 millimeters out back, so beefed up just a little bit as well. And rocking 29 inch wheels to be an awesome rig for that all around type of riding we were chatting about. Delving into the frame of the Santa Cruz High Tower Aluminum, let's talk a bit about what we have going on in 2022 with their Aluminum V2 version. So the most striking thing or the most memorable thing for the update has been down here. So they moved their VPP shock position, which used to be up top, down low, which allows most of the weight to come in lower, closer to the bottom bracket, increasing the uh, handling as well as lowering the center of gravity. And this VPP suspension design comes through with counter rotating links. And essentially what that does is that creates an S-curve in the way that the bike handles. So it's going to first resist some of your pedaling forces, allowing the bike to feel sprightly. It's going to get super supple and then ramp up towards the end of the suspension travel, which helps with the bike feeling more capable than the travel numbers would indicate. Now, this suspension design runs a standard metric shock, which is always nice to see. You can upgrade it as you want. And this happens to have the Fox Float DPS rear shock. Now going through to the back, you'll see it's a solid triangle in the back end. Of course, welded together as it is aluminum, running a boost through axle through back, post mount brakes, and then going forward, we have a 31.6 millimeter seat post diameter threaded bottom bracket, and all the way up front is a tapered head tube with internal cable routing. Now this tapered head tube is inch and an eighth to inch and a half coming down to a RockShox 35 fork. Now this RockShox 35 fork is 150 millimeters of suspension travel. It does have a damping unit allowing you to control compression. And then on the non-drive side, you can adjust air pressure as well. So in the front and the rear, both are air shocks or air fork to be able to allow you to dial the bike in to your riding feel. Now with this being the D level, this is the first part spec in the mix. So as you go up in the higher degrees of these Santa Cruz high towers, even in the aluminum, the suspension will improve as you go further up, as well as the remainder of the part spec. As far as geometry is concerned on this V2 version, you're going to be able to set it up in either a high or a low position with an adjustment of a bolt on the rear linkage. And in a high position, it's going to come in with a 65.5 degree head tube angle or 65.2 in low. 
Seat tube is gonna be 76.8 in high or 76.5 in low. And then you'll have a rear center or chain stay length of 433 millimeters. And those are gonna measure out to definitely being within the realm of modern trail bikes without going so extreme that the bike is starting to feel floppy or less fun at lower speeds, but it's certainly gonna come alive as you start to stretch its legs and go a bit faster. Cockpit wise, we've got fairly standard fare here with the D-level spec. So this is gonna be a race face Affect R handlebar. Operates with a race face ride stem and then goes out back to a WTB Volt saddle mounted up on this SDG TELUS dropper post. So the dropper post is quite nice because it's got a one by style lever. So a clean setup, it almost looks like your shift lever on the other side. And it allows you to be able to pull that lever with your body weight off and up the saddle will go get your body weight on, hit that lever, and the saddle will drop right back down out of the way. Running through the part spec on the D-level high tower, we've got a SRAM 1x12 drivetrain. So this SRAM drivetrain is SRAM's SX Eagle. So this is the beginning level of the Eagle drivetrains, and it operates a 11 to 50 tooth rear cassette. So this is giving you a pretty wide range gearing, not quite as wide as say what you would get on a GX, but the same range as on an NX system. So that's pretty nice. And that drives forward above this chain guard that has nice ribbons. So if the chain hits, it's quiet to a SRAM one by crank set. So this crank set runs through a threaded dub bottom bracket and operates using a 30 tooth narrow wide Eagle chain ring. Shifting those gears is of course, courtesy of an SX shifter. So this is gonna be thumb button to go to an easier gear thumb button forward to go to a harder gear. And then you can start braking the bike by using the guide T brakes. These are a DOT hydraulic disc brake operating four piston calipers on the front and the rear to center line six bolt rotors. Last piece to talk about are the wheel and tire combination on this bike. So for wheels, this is a WTB ST I30 rim. So this I30 rim is a double walled alloy rim. It has a 30 millimeter internal width with J-Bend spokes running to SRAM hubs on the front and the rear. And then for tires, we've got the Minion DHR2 tire in the front, a 29 by 2.4 wide trail, and then the exact same tire on the back as well. And so these Minion DHRs, they're tubeless, both in the front and the rear, tubeless ready wheels, everything coming out of the box, tubeless to help with flats, as well as increase some of the performance by being able to run slightly lower tire pressure. The actual weight of the high tower ALD comes in and weighs. Thirty five point zero four pounds. Well, thanks for watching this video on the 2022 Santa Cruz high tower aluminum in the D build. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this bike down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit that subscribe button and definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments.